Hello and welcome to McLaren Port Huron's Today's Health. On our program today, we're going to be talking all about sleep. We know we love to get a good night's sleep, but sometimes that's easier said than done. So joining us to give us lots of information is Dr. Vaskin Artinian. Dr. Artinian is board certified in sleep medicine and is the medical director of the Center for Sleep Medicine, McLaren Port Huron. Dr. Artinian, thank you for coming today. Well, thank you for having me. Well, you know, we all have nights when we don't sleep really well and we're not very happy about it. But when does it classify as a sleep disorder? Well, you know, uh, any disturbance uh, in sleep is typically is known as a sleep disorder. Um, the international uh, classification of sleep disorder, it uh, classifies disorders into seven major categories. Uh, now, for the sake of this discussion, uh, I would like to mention a few of the most common categories that we encounter in the sleep center. Um, the first category would be uh, sleep breathing disorders, uh, which include uh, diseases like obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, second category are diseases uh, related to central, ner central nervous system disorder, um, and they result into hypersomnia, such as narcolepsy. Another category will be insomnia, and another category would be uh, parasomnia, and these are behavioral uh, disorders that occur at night, such as uh, sleepwalking, sleep talking, and night terrors, and confusion arousals. So uh, the international classification clearly uh, puts these disorders under these categories, and I would say we have around 60 different specific sleep disorders uh, under these categories. It's quite extensive actually. I guess it is. That's amazing. So there's a lot of um, sleep disorders. How common are they? Well, um, it's more common than what we think. You know, the uh, estimated number of uh, sleep disorders in the United States is around uh, 70 million of the U.S. population. We think they have one, one form of sleep disorder. And uh, most of the sleep disorders, I think they're uh, untreated or they're under-recognized. Are there risks to having untreated sleep disorders? Uh, absolutely, you know, um, if a sleep disorder is uh, untreated, uh, it will cause uh, a lot of long-term uh, uh, complications and uh, we recently we've been trying to uh, link the sleep disorders to uh, chronic illnesses such as uh, depression, obesity, uh, and also cardiovascular conditions such as hypertension, coronary artery disease, and stroke. Well, let's start then with sleep apnea. How mm -hmm. do you define sleep apnea? Well, uh, apnea, uh, let me give you a definition of apnea. Apnea is whenever there's a uh, pause uh, in the breathing or shallow breathing that lasts typically around a uh, few seconds to a few minutes. Um, we classify apneas as, two ty having, as being two types of apneas, the obstructive sleep apnea and the central apnea. Uh, with obstruction or obstructive apnea is when there's an obstruction within the airway that uh, prevents the airflow from uh, happening. And uh, as a result, there's a disturbance in gas exchange and this will result into an arousal at nighttime. Now, if this apnea occurs on several occasions at night, uh, it's going to cause significant sleep disruption. And as a result, we're going to have quite s significant fragmentation in sleep and this may have a lot of short-term and long-term uh, consequences on health in general. Now, central sleep apnea, on the other hand, there is absence of uh, central signals, neurological signals that come from the brain, uh, and as a result, there is no apnea. It's not because of an obstruction, it's because of the absence of a uh, signal from the brain that will tell us to breathe. But in the, 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 the end result of both conditions is the same. There is no airflow, there's disturbance in oxygen exchange, sleep fragmentation, and long-term, you know, consequences. Well, you said that a lot of sleep um, disorders are not diagnosed, uh -huh. and yet sleep apnea is where you're not breathing. Like, what are the symptoms, and don't people know that they have sleep apnea? Well, uh, a lot of times the uh, bed partner would notice that uh, the other person who's sleeping with them in the same bedroom, you know, suffers from sleep apnea. A lot of the consultations that we see in the sleep center are individuals brought there by their bed partners, actually. A um, uh, lot of times the bed partners will complain that the person is complaining of loud snoring and they've noticed that he's not breathing at night. This is what we call witness apnea. 
a uh, lot of times you know we hear the complaint of I wake up in the middle of the night choking or gasping for air you know a lot of sleep apnea patients they have uh, dry mouth morning headaches when they wake up in the morning they'll wake up with a headache and uh, they typically report that they're quite somnolent and sleepy even if they've taken quite significant or uh, adequate number of, of sleep at night so um, Sleep apnea patients, they have sleep fragmentation, uh, sleep disruption, and excessive daytime sleepiness. So how do you diagnose and treat that then? Well, uh, we usually first build a clinical suspicion by taking a history. And uh, the second step will, do, will be to do a, a screening polysomnogram, which, which is something that we do in the sleep center. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, uh, at a screening polysomnogram will, will, will show us, you know, any signs of apneas or, or shallow breathing, which that's what we call hypopneas, sleep disruption, drop in action at nighttime, sleep fragmentation. And uh, this is how we establish diagnosis by uh, looking at the screening polysomnogram. We have a lot more to talk about, but we're going to pause for this message. Okay.